Thank you, Shane. Uh, I will make this a very quick introduction. So, uh, hi everyone, I'm Jia, so I'm one of the project leaders at BGI Research Europe. So, um, just to give a very quick introduction, so we all know why spatial tran transcriptomics is a very important method, because understanding all the different cell types and also their organization within the tissue is very important in life science research. So, um, this is also why spatially resolved transcriptomics uh, uh, method was also selected as the method of the year 2020. So, I will not uh, spend too long on this. So, in general, um, how do we carry out a spatial transcriptomics uh, study? So, this can be done in several ways. So, the first one would be to use um, a laser to isolate a uh, region of interest. So, that would be a laser-based microdissection. And then we also have uh, imaging base uh, to, re to read out the spatial transcriptomes. So, this can be done using FISH or in situ sequencing. But uh, the limitation for these techniques is that usually you would require more complex instrumentation and then you're also limited to certain sequences and also sometimes the field of view is also a little bit small. And then we also have the barcoded base probes or array where you use, um, so this is more of an unbiased uh, capture method. So for these uh, techniques, um, they also have their own challenges. So, for example, resolution. So, for example, in some of the current technology available, you can see that the capture spot size is quite big. So, they're often larger than uh, a single cell. And then also, you would have a larger um, center to center distance as well. So, meaning that you have this huge empty gap where you can't really capture um, any information. So the other challenge for the barcoded base um, technique is the capture area. So the current field of view is also quite limited as well. So it becomes a problem when you want to um, analyze a larger tissue section, for example, the human brain. So um, BGI developed um, this spatially resolved transcriptomic technique called stereoseq. So stereoseq combines uh, billions of tightly packed barcodes with a large capture area and also high reproducibility and also high capture rate. So um, if you look at the spot size for stereoseq V1, it, is, uh, it has a spot size of about 220 nanometer and also a 500 center to center uh, distance. So this is uh, achieving nanoscale resolution. And then also for the field of view, we have um, a one by one uh, centimeter chip size. So that is the st standard um, for now. Okay, so how does stereoseq work? So basically we have, um, so stereoseq is basically built on the DMB seq technology. So we have the DMB deposited onto a silicon chip. So on the DMB, we have the CID and also MID. So for the uh, spatial coordinates ID, so that would give us the information, the spatial information of where the specific transcript is. So how do we uh, get this information? So first we would have our uh, frozen tissue section. So we would normally take a 10 micron uh, frozen section and then we would load it onto our stereoseq capture chip. So by doing permeabilization, the mRNA can then be captured by the uh, poly T tail on the DMB and then we would then uh, prepare our library. So by having reverse transcription, we would generate complementary cDNA, and then we would use the cDNA as a template to create our library and then send for sequencing. So um, because we're also sequencing the CID and also MID, so this would give us the information of where the specific transcript is on the chip. So this is how we achieve uh, the spatially resolved transcriptomic profiles. Yeah, so, um, but because stereoseq is giving us nanoscale resolution, so much smaller than a single cell. So in terms of analysis, we actually have to use a different approach. So instead of the, uh, the more traditional deconvolution method, um, we actually have to use a different uh, method where we call it like a, a binning method. So what we do is that if we treat one DNB spot as a bin one, 
then this mean, this mean that we would have a resolution of 500 nanometer. But because it's so small, and then the amount of information we can get from just bin one is very limited, so what we do is that we would aggregate a different number of bin into a larger bin size. So for example, for bin two, we would have a two by two uh, size, and then bin three, and then bin four. So just to um, give like a, a scale, for bin 20, we would have a diameter of about 10 micron. So if we think of a common mammalian cell with a 10 micron diameter, so for bin 20, we would have about 400 DNB spots per single cell. So this is a really good resolution. Yep, so um, the other advantage uh, for stereoseq is that not just the really good resolution, we can also have uh, up to 13 by 13 centimeter capture chip for larger tissue. So yeah, so this is also um, hopefully available soon. <laughs> yep, so the other way where stereocy can achieve cellular resolution um, is by doing the nuclear acid and also the RNA transcript overlay. So um, during the uh, stereocyte workflow, we would also stain the SSDNA of the tissue section. So in the end, we, what we will get is the detected DMB with all the transcript uh, information, and we would also get um, the nuclear acid staining of the same tissue section. So if you look at the uh, figure here, the, uh, the color in green would be the detected DMB. So you can already see that the transcripts are uh, accumulated or they sort of aggregate to form the uh, size of a single cell. And then if we overlap that with the nucleic acid, you can see that the two signal um, actually over overlay pretty well. So by doing this, we can then try to segment the single cell or to impute the boundary of the single cell. So this is how we can achieve cellular resolution. So yeah, the figure on the bottom is to sh just show that by doing an unsupervised clustering of the uh, cell bin, we can then also see structures already that would have really localized markers and then they would correspond to different regions of the brain. Yep, and then this is another example where stereoseq was used to um, profile a, a mouse embryo so I think this uh, was done on a one by two centimeter chip. So you can see that, so this is again also a cell bin. So each of the uh, spot here would be a single cell. So uh, if you look at the zoom in for the forebrain, we can see that it actually contains a lot of uh, more localized or cell subtypes. So these can also be uh, obtained from the uh, unsupervised clustering analysis as well, and then the UMAP. Yep, and then I just want to quickly uh, talk about a few other case studies that were also done using stereoseq. So this is a really good example of um, stereoseq that was used to profile smaller tissue sample. So this is uh, where we use stereoseq to look at zebrafish embryo. So in this case, we have several uh, embryo sections placed on just one stereoseq uh, chip. So by doing the uh, sectioning and also the capture of the mRNA, we can see that we're able to capture uh, markers and also genes that would correspond to uh, really specific uh, organs or regions of the embryo. So from this, we also generated the zebrafish embryogenesis spatial temporal transcriptomic atlas called ZESTA. So this is also published and available online. Yep, and then here we have another example where stereoseq is used to do a 3D reconstruction of uh, the Drosophila embryo and also larvae. So in this uh, paper, we actually take sections from just uh, cons consecutive sections from one single uh, sample, and then by uh, overlaying or like linking the sections together, we can then start to see uh, some of the internal organs. So for example, the uh, mid gut and then the, the fat body and then also the CNS. So this is also something uh, I think is quite impressive. Yeah, so I know that a lot of the spatial transcriptomics uh, work focus on animal tissue, but here I just want to show an example where stereoseq 
uh, was used to understand plant biology as well. So in this uh, paper, we have the uh, stereotic results of the Arabidopsis leaves. So from here, uh, in addition to the staining of SSDNA, we're also, we also stain the cell wall of the plant cells. So here, uh, we can also achieve single cell resolution. I think this is like the, the first time we're getting this. And then from here, you can see that for the epidermal cell, based on the markers, we're able to uh, separate them into upper and also lower epidermal cell. And I think the other point was that we're able to see the very, uh, I, I guess, restricted patterns of certain genes from the vein of the leaf until the edge of the leaf. So this is also um, published on developmental cell. And then um, here is another example. So this is actually um, a work that was just published last week. So from the cover of science, you can see that we have the image of the axolotl. So this is actually a result from four papers. So BJR Research has contributed to one of the paper using stereoseq. So in here, um, the researchers try to look at the regeneration of axolotl brain. So I think the, uh, what is worth highlighting is that we're also getting single cell resolution in, in this paper as well. So what we what we do is similar. So you can see that for the uh, DMB and also SSDNA, so there's this overlay. overlay. Um, and then because the cell size of the axolotl is also significantly bigger, so I think for this paper, the average DMB per single cell was about 800, I think, DMB per single cell. And then for the average gene count that was captured per single cell was about 1,000, I think 600. So that's quite impressive. But of course, the cell size is also bigger. Um, so I think the takeaway from, for this research is that if we're looking at the different uh, regeneration stages, we, um, the researchers were able to find uh, this specific uh, cell subtype. So it's similar to the neural stem cell. And then it was found to appear um, near the wound of near the site of the wound, and then it would remain there until the, uh, the wound recover, and then it goes on to like developmental stages. Yep. And then here, I just want to show that uh, stereoseq can be applied in a lot of the uh, different samples. So currently, we have um, published in cell science and also in the developmental cell as well. So currently we also have uh, three preprints on Royal Archive. So uh, we hope that the collection of these papers would help to improve the understanding of the fundamental biological processes uh, for the scientific community. So since we're here, I just want to quickly uh, say that so BGI previously also initiated this uh, stock consortium, so the Spatial Temporal Omics Consortium. So this is a, a purely research uh, initiative where um, scientists who are interested in spatial temporal omics technology would come together and also discuss about possible collaboration and then also encourage the sharing of information and also discussion. So I think currently we have more than 120 scientists from more than 25 countries um, who participated in the uh, consortium. So the consortium uh, had four major initiatives. So uh, this focuses on physiology, developmental and aging, and then also disease and evolution. So this is open to the public and uh, everyone is welcome to join through the link and also the website. So finally, I just want to end my presentation by uh, highlighting some of the really exciting updates that we're gonna get for Stereoseq. So uh, we've been really uh, interested in learning all the feedbacks uh, from our collaborators regarding Stereoseq. So now we have um, an improvement. So we have chips on the slide. So basically we have chips that were placed on um, these cassettes. So these would help to uh, simplify the workflow and also the handling of the Stereoseq chips. And then the other update coming would be the cell segmentation algorithm so that we can get um, single cell level data. And then finally, we will also have more upgraded features um, in the coming year. 
so we would have new protocol. So currently our standard protocol is that we would use the cryo uh, section, but now or in the future, the uh, stereocyte will be compatible with PFA and also FFPE fixed samples as well. And then uh, we would also aim for higher single cell resolution. And then for the reagent setup, we would also expect to have a uh, cellular HNE and also I have IF or immunofluorescence imputation. So we would also um, expect to have the multi-protein profiling as well. And then finally, because uh, stereocyte is also giving, we would expect to have lots of results um, coming through the technology. So we would also want to have better algorithm and also tools for analysis of the stereocyte data. So we would see a uh, single cell binning analysis and also more efficient 3D reconstruction uh, analysis. So this is it for all, from me. And then I will now pass the stage to Nicole and then she will give an introduction on the spatial transcriptomics grant. Yeah, thank you. Okay. I know I'm standing between um, the lunch, um, but bear with me just for two, three minutes. I ho I'm hoping we get some slides as well, because I have really a great honor here today to launch the new grant to make, um, to make StereoSeq available to more people. So I would just like to share very briefly uh, some um, details about the grant and mainly the link. As you have heard today so many times, StereoSeq is really an important tool and we would like to enable more people to use this tool. So this grant is now open for researchers to accumulate more StereoSeq data. We have already heard about the consortium and uh, yeah, we have the physiology, developmental and aging as well as disease and evolution fields that we would very like, much like to support with the solution. The tools uh, we have already heard, we have reagent kits that we will make available in this grant. But more importantly, we will also have expert knowledge, field application scientists who will support you to enable you in your labs to do the work. Because not everybody can do this kind of sequencing in their labs at home, we will have specific deliverable centers that will do the sequencing for you on your behalf. For the people here in the room, this is very likely going to be our facilities here in Riga, but this is going to be a global grant, so there will be more deliverable centers available. Very important for me is that the sequencing will take place on DNB seq technology, since I'm part of the MGI crowd. <laughs> I've said this grant is going live now. The link will be live now for people to apply. Uh, and you have time until the 30th of November to submit your details. We hope to see your name and your abstract. We will then take one month to evaluate the different applications and the work will already start on the 1st of January. If you go and visit the facilities in Riga today, tomorrow, you will see that the lab is up and running and waiting for your samples. There's a lot of text, but basically we will have two deliverable models for you to enable you to do stereo um, sequencing. One is that you do part of the work in your lab and you will get support from us and our field application scientists and then send the cDNA for sequencing into the deliverable centers. Another model is the sample to result model where the winners will actually just prepare the tissue uh, and the rest will be done in the expert centers. So we're very confident that this is going to help and support the research community to generate more data. Very importantly, the link is now live. Um, for those who are joining us online, it will be available tomorrow on the platform as well. Um, we have outside a poster, uh, come and scan the QR barcode if you want to send the link further on to colleagues um, and affiliates. Um, we are not asking for very much. 
leave us your personal information, your institutes, um, and a short abstract about 300 to 1,000 words already gets you into the game. Um, we will have a, um, a panel to evaluate all these abstracts in December, and hopefully we will have lots of applications from Europe and Africa. That's a region very close to my heart, and not just North America. Okay. So with this, I would like to thank you. I would like to thank uh, the Stomachs team for, for this really, really fantastic grant and for me to give me the opportunity to present it here today.